Ben here, I'm out here working on the buzzsaw today. Now before I get started on that, I want to mention a couple of things. A little while ago I posted a video called uh, Calling All Sawmills, and I'm putting together a collaboration of a bunch of different sawmill videos together, and I'm going to post it on my channel. Something to uh, be able to let everybody see the different kinds of sawmills out there and everybody else that's using them and at the same time give some other youtubers a little bit of a uh, chance to get their name out there let other people know that their channel has a sawmill on it and they can go check them out i've gotten a lot of great responses on the, that video and uh there's a lot of people that were interested in doing that i want to try to get this video together and posted by new year's so i put in the description of that video i want the cutoff date to be christmas so if you guys want to post your videos, make sure you email them to me by Christmas. I'll post a link to my email in the description below. And uh, if you guys are still interested in it, make sure you get me a two minute clip or less by Christmas. So that way I can get you in on the uh, collaboration. Now I took the engine off of here that was dead. I pulled the cord out on, the air filter was gone on it. You're aware of all that. I went to Harbor Freight and I got this Predator engine. I hooked this motor up put a direct pulley on and ran it straight up to the pulley here and it just runs too fast. The RPM is just a little too quick for the saw. It starts to blade whistles a little bit and it's just a little bit too high RPM for me. So what I decided I'm going to do is try to slow it down a little bit. I went and got the shaft with these pulleys on it. So I'm going to go from the small pulley on the motor and I got the centrifugal pulley in the mail. came early. It's supposed to, it wasn't supposed to be until Christmas. So I got that early. But anyway, the idea is you come, you start off on the motor with a centrifugal clutch. And the idea of the centrifugal clutch, for those of you, for those of you that don't know, this, uh, the motor shaft spins in here. It spins inside this. This piece spins, and the outside housing that contains the flywheel here doesn't spin. And once you get to a certain RPM, there's discs in there that kick out and engage, and they lock together so that this whole thing spins, you know, spin the belt. So the idea is you can start your engine up, I can pull the cord and it won't have as much tension on it so it won't be as hard to pull on the engine to start it and if I let off on the RPMs on the motor, throttle it down a little bit, it'll stop the blade from spinning. So that's why I wanted to get one of these on there. So I'm going to start off with this, I'm going to go from this small pulley to this bigger pulley and then about from this small pulley up to this slightly larger pulley. So that should slow my RPM rate down on my motor. I got two pillow block bearings there. I'm going to put on this shaft and I'm going to mount this in here somewhere so that I can come off the motor and come over to the pulley and then from the pulley up to the blade shaft. Hope that makes sense. I got the buzz saw back out here by the sawmill and now the improvements I made I've got a couple things going on here. I have two pieces of C channel here, and this was left over from something else that was in the garage. So I use what I have left, and uh, I put two carriage bolts up through it, one here and one over there. Now what those bolts do is it allows me to teeter this, this piece of steel. If I go down on this one and up on that one, it brings it up, and then it brings this bearing down. I went all the way down till this is down bottomed out in the wood. Originally my idea was to go all the way down on that side and then bring this side down until it was tight. But by the time I got the belt tight this was all the way down and I actually brought that one back up a little bit. I have a jam nut on the bottom so that way I can raise it or lower it and then tighten the nut on top and nut on the bottom to get it to anchor where I want it. I have just a simple pillow block bearing here on each side, 3 quarter inch shaft, 3 16 key. Put both belts on and before I tighten this down what I did is I got this belt here on first. I went up here on top, put it on, brought it down here, put it on this pulley, and then tightened down on these bolts to get this belt tight. Once this belt was tight, then this belt here, I put on the motor. I showed before, I believe, the uh, channels that I cut in here. My brother helped me make this, this mount here, so he actually cut these channels, and I'll give credit where credit's due. And all I have to do is loosen up on them and then slide the motor back in order to tighten this belt. 
So now I have adjustment where I can tighten the belts and I don't need any kind of a tension or pulley. And that's all there is to it. So let me fire it up and I'll show you it running a little bit. And then uh, I'll cut some wood here show you how she works. Before I do that, let me explain before I get the motor going and the noise gets a little too loud here. This motor is underpowered for this job what I'm doing here. Most of my slab wood is on the smaller side. Okay. You know, inch thick stuff. Maybe inch and a half. There's really not a whole lot here that's real thick. Some of the stuff that is on the super thick side, the saw bogs down on. It bogged down on it before and it's gonna bog down on it now. But for what I'm doing, it'll work okay. But if you're looking to try to copy what I'm doing here, this is just, the motor's a little too small. What I probably should do is have sheaves on there with three or four belts and uh, you know do this a little bit differently. But for right now, this is what I come up with. I wanted that centrifugal clutch on there so that I can idle the motor down a little bit and get the blade to stop spinning so that I can be around the blade a little bit to pick up the pieces of wood. Sometime in the future I'm going to paint this and I'm going to put some guards on it. I do want to put a guard on the blade. I want to put one on the outside here and I want to put one on the inside and just leave an opening here for where the wood goes into it. That'll be something in the future. Another future job that I'd like to do, and I don't know if it'll ever happen or not, but it would be nice to get a conveyor. Set a little conveyor up here so that when the wood drops down off the saw blade, it hits the conveyor and goes up and then drops either into a trailer or into a tote or even into, onto a skid or something of that nature. It'd be better than bending over here and picking it up all the time. So a conveyor might be something I'll be considering in the future here. All right, enough of me talking. Let's fire this thing up and let's see it run. Harbor Freight Predator motor. I've gone over this before, but I'll do it one more time. On and off switch. I'm going to turn that to the on position. You have your choke, which I'm going to choke it to start it. And then you have your gas on and off, which I just always leave in the on position. The throttle's here. Back is off or down throttle and then throttling it up higher RPM. So to start it out with, I'm going to come just a little bit off of zero there. Let's give it a rip and see what she does. Ready? Now you can see the motor's running. The motor's running, but the blade is not. Okay?
couple things I want to mention here while we're out here doing this cutting a little bit. I'll show you some of this wood here. The saw cuts really good. I can't complain at all about that. I actually like the way it's set up. It has a little bit more torque, I believe, just because of the way the pulleys are. But uh, I left that pulley where the motor is a little slack. I pushed the motor back by hand. I don't have any kind of uh, an all thread adjustment or anything to put some tension on the motor. So the belt that goes from the motor from the motor to the shaft here, this belt, it's just a little, a little loose. Not bad, but just a little bit. And what happens is I put a bigger piece of wood up in here in the blade and it tends to bog down a little bit. I cut some pretty big pieces of wood here. Let's see if I can find some bigger ones here to show you. Just like this one here is a good one. If you watch my videos, I broke the end off my last tape measure. So I went and bought a Milwaukee tape measure, 16 footer. Not associated with Milwaukee, but I like their products. Now that piece there is just three inches wide. The buzz saw here, or buck saw, whatever you want to call it, cut that piece of wood there three inches thick without any kind of problem. And there's a lot of them here that are just as thick, if not thicker. That's a pretty nice pile of wood, ain't it? That's all slab wood. That's all going to be firewood. Now, while we're talking about slab wood and firewood, there's a couple questions I've got. Now here's a nice piece of cherry. It's got some uh, defects in it, a little bit of rot or something in there. This piece, you can tell I started to cut it and it slipped in the sawmill, so I adjusted it and cut it again. This is uh, just uh, where they cut with the chainsaw off. This is just one of the limbs that I cut off. So this piece I don't really think is much good for anything. But there are a lot of pieces here. I saved some of these. I've gotten requests for different pieces of wood for people turning projects. Now here's a good piece of wood that I have. This piece is about three and a half inches thick at its thickest point and maybe two inches thick on the sides. Okay, it's about seven inches wide overall. I cut it down to 16 inches. I believe most lathes can only chuck a piece of wood between most smaller lathes I would say is 16, 18 inches. So I, I figured just cut it down 16 inches and you know they cut it down for whatever they need. Now would this piece of wood be good for most people? I don't know. That's a question I have for you wood turners out there. Would this be something you guys would be looking be looking for? You know, I know you can set it down and put it on a bandsaw and cut it out into a circular piece and maybe make a very shallow bowl or something out of it but I don't think you're gonna get a whole lot out of it that way now pens if you're making one inch one inch square pen blanks I think you could probably make a few pen blanks out of this uh, you know I don't know maybe uh, maybe if you cut it into two inch by two inch squares maybe you can make some kind of spindles or something out of it I'm not sure but let me know what you think. Is it worth me saving these pieces or is it better off just putting them in a firewood pile? Now here's some cherry wood I've got. Here's a piece of cherry, another piece of cherry. That one has a little bit of rot in the end of it, but I don't think it goes very far. You know, this other end is good. Another piece of cherry. Here's a piece of walnut. Now the walnut is the same thing. You know, I don't think you're gonna get much out of this being an inch and a half, inch and three quarter on the wide part on this end of it and it's only about eight and a half inches wide or so now as far as thickness goes it starts out up here at inch and a half, inch and three quarter down on the thickest point it's about three inches thick and then it tapers back off again down to about two inches backside you can see there's a bit of a burl there or not or a, you know a piece where one of the uh, limbs were cut off and it grew over it and here's a knot on this side as well and you can see there's even a little bit of a hole there in it so I'm not sure what this kind of stuff would be any good for anybody or not you can see the dark wood and the walnut you know goes out so far and the sap wood is white on the outside so that's another piece of wood where it's like is it worth me saving that kind of stuff or to be better off as firewood. 
that's a question I have for people out there doing wood turning projects. I've had a few people ask me for some wood. Here's another piece of walnut. You can see it's real thin on this end. There's nothing really there on that side. And you can see the heartwood on that. That piece is probably just firewood. I really can't see. There's even a piece of rot there in the end. That one's going over the firewood pile. There's some pieces here, and these are all walnut. That one's walnut, that one's walnut, that one's walnut. But they're only an inch and a half thick. You can see the dark wood comes right down through here, about like there. So you're only getting maybe an inch thick of the real good stuff. So if people are looking for pen blanks, I think that kind of stuff would be good for that. But uh, as far as anything else, I just don't really see it. There's a couple more pieces of cherry. This is a short piece. Got a little bit of rot in it, but it's a little bit on the thicker side. This piece here, that's a two inch thick by about eight inches wide, a little bit over. And it's got some nice dark color to it, some nice, nice piece of cherry. And here's another piece of that same stuff that I had earlier. You know, same thing I believe, about three inches thick and about seven inches wide. Now if I had left this on the sawmill, could I have gotten another one by out of it? Yes, I probably could have, but if you go and you see, you see how thick this is down at this end. It's real wide and thick and it comes down, it's tapering down. And then a little bit further, it tapers right down to nothing. So is it worth me saving for a two foot board? I don't think so. That's why it's in this pile. And here's another piece of cherry. This piece is about inch and three quarter. It's about six inches wide. And it's about three foot long. And that piece was the same thing. It was a good piece here, but it quickly tapered down to nothing on the other end. Got a couple of bigger slabs here. Some red oak some ash a little bit of everything here these pieces I'm thinking about building a bench or something along those lines we'll see how that goes don't look for it anytime real soon but in the near future sometime I will be building a bench out of some of the stuff there's a little bit of everything here this piece here I'm thinking might make a nice table to somebody you know maybe like a little end table or something maybe even an outdoor piece or something I don't know Nice and wide, I mean, 16 inches wide at the widest point, and I'd say on average it's about 12 inches wide. A little over four foot long, and it's about two and a half inches thick. And then it's got live edge on the other side too. All these have live edge on the back side, they're all bark on the other side. You know, bark fell off of that piece, piece of red oak, but there's some nice lumber there. It just, I really don't have a reason for it. You know, I think most people run this stuff through a chipper to have, you know, industrial sawmills. It's just not worth saving to them. That's all I've got for today. I've got the buzzsaw running. That's a big improvement. I'm happy with that. I've got all the slab wood cut up that I wanted to get cut up. I saved a few pieces here and a few pieces over there got firewood cut i'm gonna get this stacked and put on skids i think i'm gonna tarp it off and save it for next year once it's seasoned i'll advertise it for sale maybe i'll get a few dollars for gas and saw blades out of it let me know in the comments below what you think of all the slab wood i've got laying here now that you see it cut down and what you see i really have you know everybody was saying how thick of pieces i left them and really they're not that thick two three inches at the most is that worth saving for somebody for wood turning project? I don't know. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.